All right, so this week it was either Thursday night. I believe it was Thursday night. This past Thursday night. But Bethany Bosser, who was a soccer player of the NWSL, the National Women's Soccer League, and she plays for the OL Reign, she tweeted, Hey, NWSL and CBS. Maybe we should reconsider that 9 a.m. kickoff for the CC championship game. If you really cared about women's sports, you would actually put us at prime time. Thanks in advance. I would love to see someone look into an NWSL player's eyes and tell them they have to eat pregame meal between 6 to 7 a.m. for a 9 or 10 a.m. kickoff for a professional women's game. Now, let me be honest. Before I read this tweet, I didn't know much about the NWSL. And even as I'm talking right now, I still don't know much about the NWSL. So what I did before I, before I made this video right here, I did a little bit of research and I, I watched some of the highlights just to see what the players are like, just to see what the teams are like in general. So I found this YouTube page It's called Attacking Third Soccer Highlights. So it's basically a YouTube page dedicated to women's sports, uh, NWSL and the U.S. Women's National Team. So basically, Bosser of the NWSL is saying that women's like women's soccer is is it's like being it's not really being looked upon it's like it's like they're not being treated right that's basically what she's saying she's basically saying that women soccer players and the nc and, and the nwsl as a whole is basically being treated like trash does she have a point now you may be wondering what is it that she's really angry about bosser is angry over the possibility it's not a fact yet, but it's a possibility that the Challenge Cup, which is a, a woman, the NWL, the NWSL soccer tournament, it's a, it's a tournament. The Challenge Cup, she, she's angry over the possibility, not a fact, but a possibility that the Challenge Cup will take place in the morning time at 9 a.m. But as I'm continuing saying, it's just a possibility for now. OL Reign, they were, they are the first team to clinch a spot in the Challenge Cup final. And I believe if they have the highest seed, if they have the best record of all the teams that will, of the team that will be in the final, then they will host it. And OL Reign is located in Seattle, West Coast. And the, the television network that's hosting it is CBS and CBS is East Coast base. So CBS is most likely going to choose a time that's in the early afternoon. Whether it's an East Coast or a West Coast game, I mean, whether an East Coast or a West Coast team hosted, CBS will most likely choose a time slot that's gonna be in the early afternoon rather than it being prime time and Bosser will rather the game be a prime time game. Now, if you're a NWSL fan, I really need your help in the comment section. Is the NWSL Challenge Cup equivalent to the US Open Cup? Now, granted, the US Open Cup is not only about MLS, it's also about the USL. I believe the Challenge Cup just consists of NWSL teams. But my question is, is the NWSL Challenge Cup just as prestigious to the woman as the US Open Cup is to the men? Because right now, I don't know much about NWSL. I don't know much about women's football, but I am now interested after this tweet by Bosser. As a result of this tweet by Bosser, I have been doing a little research and I will start paying more attention to the league. Bosser's tweet got my attention. 
So last year was my first time truly watching men's traditional football. And this year is going to be my first time watching women's traditional football. So as time grows, the more I watch, the more I will learn, the more knowledgeable I will be of the sport. So similar to how I make a lot of mistakes at times when I'm talking about men's traditional football, I'm definitely going to make a lot of mistakes when I talk about women's traditional football. But as time goes on and I continue to learn about both sports, the men's and women's sports, I'll become more knowledgeable and I'll make less mistakes. Now, let me just give my belief. The bigger issue, what is the bigger issue? I believe the bigger issue is this. Bosser was, is alluding, she's questioning whether or not the NWSL and CBS really care about women's sports. Does CBS care about women's sports? Well, does CBS cares about women's football? Women's traditional football, soccer, does CBS really care? Probably not. Does the NWSL? Yes. And in my honest opinion, that shouldn't even be a question. That shouldn't even be up for debate. And here's how. The NWSL, they have made efforts to improve the state of the sport and to clean up the mess from the 2021 scandal. I believe that new commissioner, Jessica Bierman, I believe she's, she's, she's trying hard and I think she's doing things right right now based on the little knowledge that I have. First thing, the new, the, the new collective bargaining agreement. The minimum salary for NWSL players grew from is 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 going I think I think the the it starts in 2023. Um the the new the agreement the everything with the salary but the salary is going to raise from the minimum salary now is going to raise from 20,000 to 35,000. dollars Now this is just minimum salary. This is not max salary. So basically nobody in the NWSL should have a salary that's below $35,000 starting in 2023. And according to ESPN, that is, uh, it's nearly like a 60% increase. It's nearly a 60% increase. Also with that, it's also gonna be yearly raises a 4%, 4% yearly raises. So I believe each player's contract, it'll, it'll raise by their finances, their, their salary will raise by 4% every year. All the players will receive salary increases, whether you're rookie, veteran, everybody's getting an increase. Also with that, it'll come matching retirement fund contributions. And then there'll be life and health insurance and housing stipends. I don't know how other, I don't know how the MLS works. I don't know how the USL works. I don't know if they offer housing stipends. Um, I don't know about NFL, NBA, but I th here's one thing. Here's another thing that's, that I believe is gonna separate the NWSL from all major professional sports, not only women's professional sports, but even men's professional sports. In this new collective bargaining agreement that starts in 2023, the players will have eight weeks of parental leave available and up to six months in paid mental health leave. Now, mental health is a big thing that we've been hearing amongst athletes, professional athletes in recent years. And I don't know of any professional sport any major professional sport in America that provides up to six months in paid mental health leave. I just, I, I don't think the NFL has that. I don't think the NBA has that. I don't think NHL, MLB, I don't even think MLS has that. And then eight weeks of parental leave. I don't even, I don't think the other major sports have that available too. I know there's a lot of times where I hear about NFL players missing a game so they can be with their pregnant wife who's in labor getting ready to have a child and i believe they just have that one day off i literally believe that they just have that one game off and then 
The following week, they have to return to work for practice. But NWSL players have eight weeks of parental leave. Now, I know that men don't get pregnant and they don't have child. So I know it's, it's different for men compared to women. But there's a lot of men who want to be there with their wives. There's a lot of men in professional sports who are married, not, not all male professional athletes or dogs. There's a lot of good fathers, good men that want to be there for their wife, not only when she's getting ready to have the child in the hospital, but after she has the child, before and after actually. There's a lot of men who want to be there for their wife when she's pregnant. And there's a lot of men who want to be there for the wife after she has the child. And I don't believe that the NFL, the NBA, MLS, NHL, MLB, I don't think they give their players eight weeks of parental leave to be there for the wife and the newborn baby. So I think this, the eight weeks of parental leave and the six months in mental health leave, I think that's a big a big benefit in the NWSL that's really going to separate them from the other major leagues. As a matter of fact, I think that this collective bargaining agreement, this aspect of the collective bargaining agreement, the eight weeks of parental leave and the six months of paid mental leave, mental health leave, is going to be a model that other major leagues like the NFL and the MLS is going to it's going to follow. It's going, to, it's going to be. It's going to be used as a model, and the other leagues may pick up from that. So, I think Bosser questioning if the NWSL really cares about women's sport. I believe that was out of emotion. Now, if you're talking about CBS, that that's who you should. That's who you should direct this question towards, because, in my honest opinion, I think the only sport that CBS truly truly cares about is rugby style football. They got the NFL AFC package. Um, I mean, they broadcast NFL AFC games on Sunday. And then on Saturdays, they broadcast college football SEC games. However, in 2024, they will no longer be broadcasting SEC games as the SEC already has a deal set with ESPN and ESPN is going to broadcast all SEC games for for 10 years, I believe, for 10 seasons, starting in 2024, I believe. And, and the thing about CBS is CBS is a business and the primetime slots are usually for leagues that has high viewership. And when it comes to C in defense of CBS, they're not thinking about gender. They're not they're not even thinking about league or or league, really. It's the sport that has the highest viewership that will cause more people to tune in to their television network during that prime time. And that's how they will be able to make their money. So it's a it's a bottom line aspect of it. It's, it's the business side of, aspect of it. It's all business. It's not about, oh, we don't want to put women in a prime time slot because we don't care about women. It's not about that at all. It's just business. I really don't know what the NWSL or CBS can do because traditional football in America in general is still young. It's, it's the Bitcoin, it's the future, but it's still not popular. It's young and it's still growing. So I don't know what the NWSL or CBS can do to, to, fi to, to, to find some kind of solution to Boster's grievance. But one thing I do know that this tweet did, it drew more attention to the sport. And and it drew somebody like me who never watched an NWSL game or a highlight to go to YouTube and start watching the highlights. And it made me see realize that this sport is not bad. There's a lot of great athletes, a lot of great players and this league has potential. So I think the benefit of this tweet is it got people's attention. Boss really got people's attention with this tweet. And I think more people will start paying more attention to the NWSL to learn more about it 
and to see what it is all about. But in closing, the NWSL does care about women's sport. I think Boston was wrong for questioning the leagues, the, the NWSL, or questioning whether they really care about women's sport. You're not wrong about questioning CBS. I mean, yeah, you can question them, but it's still business. It's not about gender for them. It's about the bottom line. It's about money for them. I dedicated over 10,000 hours. Uh. And I never listened to the doubters. I had to cut out all the BS, hit the refresh. Now feel so empowered. I dedicated over 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. I dedicated over 10,000 hours.